In this video, I'll show you how to make a sliced, cut, torn text effect with Adobe Photoshop. You can add action to simple looking text with this method. I add a background image to make the text stand out more and add the text that we want to tear, cut over this background. I am writing a text to the scene with the text tool. I write the word cut. I center both horizontally and vertically. After adding our text, we can delete the background here because we won't need it anymore. After clicking the delete button, I click yes to delete the background. We can even lock the background by clicking this icon, thus preventing it from moving unintentionally. After typing our text, I choose the polygonal lasso tool. I draw a line from where I want to cut. Let's draw our line so that it passes through the middle. Then let's make our selection to cover all the text outside of the area. Click on the mask icon in the layers panel. It will completely wipe the underside. The reason is this. When we apply a mask to the selected area, as you can see here, the black areas will be invisible, while the white areas will remain visible. Now, I'm making a copy of this work we have done. Let me change the name of it to Cut2. By the way, you can also use the Ctrl J key combination to duplicate a layer. With the layer mask selected here, I press Ctrl I on the keyboard. The letter I means invert. So, we reverse the selection here. Therefore, we apply the masking process that we have just done to the bottom of the text. So, the area of the upper side will be different. The area of the lower side will also be different. Now, we can move the layers with the Move tool. Select Move tool. When I scroll like this, it will look as if the text was actually split in half. We can even move the text away from symmetrical perception by pressing Ctrl T and rotating it from the rotate points in the corners. After deciding the positioning, let's add the tearing effect. We can refer to freepick.com to reach this type of torn paper effects. If we type paper torn in the search section, we can encounter images like this. These are mostly vector images and we can open these vector images with Photoshop or Illustrator and use these torn edges. We will do so now. I download this image to my computer and open it with Illustrator. When I open the vector file that comes out of the file with the Illustrator program, it will look like this. So we can see that it is completely vector. I right click and select the ungroup option. So I want to get one of them. For example, this one. I open the Pathfinder panel by pressing Ctrl Shift F9. I draw a rectangle on its edge and select both. I delete the top part completely by clicking the divide button and then ungroup. My intention is to reach the area here. I copy this and paste it into Photoshop by selecting Smart Object. I use Ctrl C in Illustrator and Ctrl V keys in Photoshop program. Thus, I ensure that the object we copied here as Smart Object is transferred. I enlarge the rib portions at the bottom to match the sliced portions of the text. We can even collapse these fields by pressing the Shift key. This is how I set up. When we look closely, we will see that this paper tearing effect that we pasted is inside the text. Now we need to erase the parts of this text that are below the paper tear effect. Let's name it first for ease of understanding. I click here once by pressing the Ctrl key on the keyboard. As you can see, the field is selected. Now I press the letter Ctrl Shift I from the keyboard. So I'm inverting the selection here. I choose the brush tool and select the mask area of the top text and paint here. Let's set it up nicely. As you can see, when I paint it black, the areas begin to fade. Opacity value needs to be 100%. It was painted gray like this because it is not 100%. Now, when I paint the outside parts again, we will make those parts look like paper ribs. And after this process, I press Ctrl D to deselect and make the paper tearing effect invisible. As you can see, they look like they are torn up now. Of course, it will change according to how you choose the torn image. Now, I will do the same with the text below, but not with the same paper. I'll find a new paper tear area. We can do this by taking the part above. I undo what I did. I already do similar actions. This time, I set it to be top. I press Ctrl C and paste here with Ctrl V. This is how we set it up. I can delete the previous one and give the new one the same name. I press the Ctrl key. I like to select the one below and reverse the selection with Ctrl Shift I and I delete these areas with the brush tool. If you cancel its visibility, the selected fields will still be selected, but you will be able to see what you have deleted much more clearly. 
After completing the operations in this way, I remove this selection by pressing Ctrl D. We will no longer be using the paper tone layer. We can delete this. Now we have separated the text in general and we have made it look as if it is torn with the tearing effect. Now we will try to make it look much more beautiful and realistic with some shadow games. You can adapt this shading process according to you. I'll do it this way. I will give a shadow to the bottom. This will make the top layer look like it's on top of the bottom layer. I select the bottom layer, create a new layer. I select the brush tool by pressing the letter B on the keyboard. Let's soften the brush tool a bit. I do a painting like this and right click on the area I painted and select create clipping mask. The area I'm painting will be set to just overwrite the text. When I lower its opacity a little bit, this area will look like it has been shaded. Now let's shade other places. I create another new layer and this time I make the brush a little bigger. We can right click and select create clipping mask again and lower the opacity a bit. Let's do the same for the top. We can also use shortcut to create clipping mask. If we click on the line in between by pressing the Alt key on the keyboard, it will apply the clipping mask we just made. If we lower the opacity value here, it won't be bad. I can't say that this layer needs to be there. It will look much nicer if we change their names to shadows. We can remove the middle shadow layer. We can also make these effects from blending options alternatively. I would like to show you this. I am removing the top shadow layer. I double click on the cut tool layer and open blending options. And here by selecting the gradient overlay option we can make these adjustments to cast shadows on the upper areas. Not only do we have to paint, we can also do these shadings with gradient overlay. This is a matter of preference. You can apply it whichever way you find easy. Yes, you can do the slicing and tearing effects this way. It doesn't have to be white, of course. You can also get different results by changing the colors like this. In this video, I showed you one of the ways to cut text with Photoshop. This way, if there are overlapping pieces, you can make it look like they are really on it by using these shadow painting techniques. You can develop these techniques with these methods you have learned. That's it for this video. If this video helped you out, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.